presented by the sheriff. Deputies hope this new surveillance video will help them in solving a murder. A 39-year-old dad was shot and killed, and now deputies are hoping someone knows something about who the shooter is. Deputies said it happened outside a restaurant last month along South Boulevard near the intersection of U.S. 441 and Sand Lake Road in Orlando. News 6's Lauren Cervantes is following this story for us live tonight. And Lauren, you spoke with the owner of the restaurant uh, who the victim came out of. Yeah, I spoke with the owner and he says he's concerned because the shooting happened in the parking lot just outside of his restaurant. And it's this security camera right here that caught two individuals that deputies are now asking for your help identifying. And in that video, they were seen at one point behind these bushes and then in this parking lot. I'm a family member. I'm a Haitian. The guy who get died who shot, he get shot and killed is a Haitian. It's my blood. Dorellis Pierre, owner of La Belle Caribbean Restaurant, commenting on the death of Edson Faustin, who deputies say was shot in the parking lot after walking out of Pierre's restaurant. The Orange County Sheriff's Office is putting out this security camera footage in the hopes someone can identify two people caught on camera, one of them the murderer. Deputies point out this man in an orange Armani Exchange shirt. I need to find out who he is. I want to see if anybody can see the way he's walking, his gait, his stance, his mannerisms or even his face. I think that he might be involved in some way. The video shows the man leaving LaBelle and walking over to his car. Deputies describing it as possibly a Honda Accord. On the right of the screen right now by the bushes, you're gonna see two individuals low crawl. One of those individuals is going to be my murderer. Deputies say the man in the orange shirt starts his car without issue and then pops the hood of the car. Deputies saying this may have been a stall tactic or distraction until the victims walked out. Then the victims are seen in the parking lot. He closes the hood. It may be a signal to alert the two would-be robbers that they're approaching. My victims are approaching. And uh, he very nonchalantly gets in the vehicle. And he stays in the vehicle. As Yo. Yo. Marcy, man, what you doing in that situation, man? Um, well, if I was the... If I was the Either one of those guys, just be scanning. Just scanning for anything that's out of the ordinary. If you, if, you know, if you see a guy working on a car, like I, I work on my own truck, so if I see a guy working on a car, i probably go up to him and ask him, hey, need any help. But the, even if I did that, I'd still be just scanning everything and see if anything's out of the ordinary. That's the first thing. Let me tell y'all, man. Salute to um, Jerry Judge Hines, man. He says, I'm a black Brit member living and watching from Singapore. Love the truth bomb vibe. Salute black British dude and living in Singapore. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to you, man. Um, You over there with them tigers, man. You living, the, you living a, a sun man's dream, man. Um, So, about an hour ago, I'm downstairs playing with my daughter, and I hear banging on the door. And I go to the door. I mean, I keep my screen door locked, so you can't even touch my door because my screen door is always locked. Um, and I look, and I look through the window because I got a little window on my door. And there's some guy telling me, "Some is this is this such and such address?" Blah blah blah. I'm like, "Nah, nah." This is um what this is blankety blank address. And he says, um, I, I found a check, man. And I'm trying to return the check. And he's like showing the check. And I'm like, nah, man. <laughs> like, nah, I'm talking to him through the door. Nah, you got the wrong address. He keeps like he was kind of like, well, do you know where it is? Did it which way? I'm like, it's well over that way or that way, right? And I was you like, need, you need a ring doorbell, Ock. No, nah, but I was like, I'm not. Opening the door. Yeah, he's trying, trying to get. He's trying to get. He's going to knock, go door to door until he gets somebody to crack that door open. Yep. Yeah, I'm six three, three hundred pounds. I keep a blade on me. I hit like a mule kick, and I'm still not opening the door. So, do you ladies? That tells you, man. If I won't open the door for that shit, ain't no way in the world y'all should open the door. I was just thinking about if my wife had been there by herself. 
but she said she wouldn't open she wouldn't have opened the door so um yeah man you got to be vigilant at all times man Sun Man is, you never know. And that guy may have had good intentions. Maybe he was really returned. I don't know. I watched him as he went to other houses and like on the block and trying to knock on the door. So I was like, all right, maybe he really is returning the shit. But I'm not opening my door. Hell no. Deputy saying this may have been a stall tactic or distraction until the victims walked out. Then the victims are seen in the parking lot. He closes the hood. It may be a signal to alert the two would be robbers that they're approaching. My victims are approaching and uh, he very nonchalantly gets in the vehicle and he stays in the vehicle as the two people are getting robbed directly in front of him, right in front of his windshield. He's observing this. He's witnessing this. He's obviously asking for the bag. They give him the bag and throw it on the floor. They surrender it and he's, they still get shot. Deputy say another victim. Wow. Son man still. Some man still shoot you. Some man still shoot you, man. Even if you give it up. Damn. <laughs> the guy in the car just drove away, never called 911, never did anything. And that's why you shoot, Bob. What do you mean, never called 911? What are you talking about, Glider? What are you talking about? Never called 911. The guy in the car didn't call the police. That's he what you're talking about. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, how do you know? You don't know, but you don't know that. But I'm, Because I'm sure the cops are still looking for him, Ock. That's how I know. Okay, well, now. <laughs> just, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, I mean, you know, well. Tim was also injured in the shooting. At the time, that person was listed in critical condition. Deputies have not updated us on that person's condition. They're asking anyone who might be able to identify the two in the video or who knows something about the shooting to contact them. For now in Orange County, I'm Lauren Cervantes, getting results, News 6. Well, the theft and robbery of Air Jordans has been happening for decades, not just in New York City, but across the country. It's happened again. A teenager is the victim. He was left unconscious on the sidewalk. The theft of Air Jordan, they're still doing this shit. They're still... Stealing people's Air Jordans in 2020. Yeah, but they stomped this kid unconscious. Well, that's what they've been. They've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's nothing new. <laughs> Listen, at least man, they didn't kill him. Out. I mean, I've been stomped out. I didn't, I didn't lose consciousness, but I've been stomped out, man, by a bunch of Negroes, man. That shit, that shit happens, <clears> man. That shit, this was 1992. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, things happen, man. I was, and then again in 2007, man. You get into some shit with Sun Man, man. You, you, they, they going, they definitely going to pile on you, man. Broad, man. broad daylight in Manhattan. Broad day, broad, both mine broadway, was broad daylight. On Broadway in Manhattan. That's both mine was broad daylight. Both of mine was a broad daylight. Major areas. Major areas. One was outside of a train station in 1992. The other one was like um, on a major avenue in DC, a very notable iconic avenue. It happens, man. That that shit that shit happens, man. That's part of life, man. As, when living under the sun, man. Hey, how does a big guy you get stomped out? Easy. The the dudes listen, Sun first of all, Sun Men hit hard, right? Then Sun Men know how to fight. Like, you gotta understand, like they know how to fight. Like, they not like novices at fighting. They good at fighting. And then when you get a bunch of them together, sometimes you just gotta and after a while, you just gotta curl up and <laughs> go to hell, man, and protect your vital organs, man. Um and then sometimes they knock you down. I mean, listen, man, yeah. listen, man. I'm I'm just trying to tell you, Marcy, like it's real out there, man. <laughs> and dude, honestly, six 13 year olds could take the average man down. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. I just I, I I've never been I've never been stomped out, so I just I just figured I'd ask. Yeah, man. I mean Look, man, I mean, 
it's no shame in it to me. It was shame at the time. Now, at the time, it was shame and anger. You know what I'm saying? And all that stuff. But I, all, as an older guy now, you know, I can talk about it. You know, it, it is what it is, man. Um, well, the theft and robbery of Air Jordans has been happening for decades, not just in New York City, but across the country. It's happened again. And I wasn't always this big. I didn't get to 300 pounds till I got into like my late 30s. I was okay. a walking two. I was 215, two, 220, 230, 200. Even at in even at 22, I was like 175. Okay. Like I'm not. A, I'm not like a. I'm, I I just got got this weight on me as I got older. Again, I, I, that's what that, that's what it was. I thought you were. You said you're. When you gave you dimensions. I thought you were just a big guy. When you gave you dimensions, I thought you were always a big guy. I mean, I was I was always the same height. Yeah, but as far as the weight, no. A teenager is the victim. He was left unconscious on the sidewalk. Three suspects seen in this NYPD issued photo, all wanted for a brutal beating and robbery. The victim, police say, a 16 year old boy. His attackers left him unconscious on the sidewalk and then stole his Jordan sneakers. And no one. The kid. Nina heard about the Saturday night assault in front of this McDonald's in the Hamilton Heights section of Manhattan. She was not shocked to hear about any of it, including the suspects stealing the victim's sneakers right off his feet. No one did anything. I think that's the biggest issue. We need to work together within the city. We spoke with the teen victim's father at their home Thursday night. They declined to speak with us for this story. But law enforcement sources familiar with this case tell us the victim and his friend initially got into an argument with the suspects down the block at the Riverbank State Park ice skating rink. You hear a lot of things like that every day. It's been happening for years. These teens tell us these days, taking someone else's shoes after a fight is often considered a prize. After hearing things like this, you know, you start to think twice about wearing like expensive clothes and, you know, Jordans, expensive Jordans, highly desirable because you start to see that, okay, I might be a target of this violence and this conflict, and you start to think twice about it. It's like a plus one type thing. It's like <laughs> Okay, yeah. so. You know, that's a, they showed Riverbank State Park, right? It's a beautiful hundreds of millions of dollars recreation center, state of the art, that they built so that this wouldn't happen. And it happens even more because it's there. Yeah, man, no solutions. <laughs> Listen, man. I think He's about ice. They have like they have like a regulation ice skating rink over there. I mean, indoor. I think it's indoor, but it's like you could practice to like to like go to the Olympics on that thing. These kids are. I applaud these kids for talking about the real issues they're facing. You notice none of them are talking about police brutality. None of them are talking about white supremacy. None of them are talking about Karens. This is their life. This is the problems in their life. This is the major issues in their life. But salute to these kids for talking about what's actually going on in their life. And shame on you gliders for really believing that bullshit that these kids are worried about some fucking redneck in a pickup truck. So we that set we set days, up we set up that midnight basketball for them, you know? We don't understand. In someone else's shoes after a fight is often considered a prize. After hearing things like this, you know, you start to think twice about wearing like expensive clothes and you know, Jordans, expensive Jordans, highly desirable, because you start to see that, okay, I might be a target of this violence and this conflict. And you start to think twice about it. It's like a plus one type thing. It's like I beat you up. I got your Jordans now. And it's like I can do what I want with them. It's like an ego thing, kind of. Suspects, again, you saw in the story, still on the loose. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Crime Stoppers hotline. That number, 1-800-577-TIPS. A Marion, Arkansas father says he can sleep peacefully tonight knowing his daughter's killer will spend the rest of her life in prison. Her killer was finally convicted yesterday. Hello, I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. Last April, his eight-year-old daughter was shot and killed. WRG's Ashley Paul joins us now live. And Ashley, her father tells us he wasn't sure he would ever see justice for his daughter. 
Yes, Stephanie and Greg. Well, we reported back in April, the woman accused of killing eight-year-old Jemiah Hall was out on bond, and Jemiah's family was angry and upset about it. But tonight, they can move forward with some peace of mind after learning that woman will spend the rest of her life behind bars. Think about it. 